This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Eyes Without a Face from 1960, directed by Georges Franjou, RJ. Who? You want to know what Ooh. the U.S. title is for this year movie? I didn't know there was one, so yeah, well, I guess. Well, there was a U.S. release of this movie. It got okay. a rebrand. I believe it's like the Horror Chamber of Dr. Faustus. Wait, is that guy's name Faustus in the movie? No. Oh, so they changed the names too? Well, they, I mean, it's, they probably dubbed it. Horror... Or it, it, was just, it was just to get uh, butts and seats. To get what in seats? Butts. Whew. Asses, if you will. I'm looking into this now. Uh, did you know the, the French title was Lay You Sans Visage? It's French. Immaculate French, my man. Lay You Sans Visage. It, You're about the visage. Visage. Uh, his name is Le Doctor Genesir. Mm-hmm. Not Faustus. The tagline for this film, RJ. Yeah. Beautiful women were the victims of his fiendish facials. Sh- shut up. <laughs> shut up. You're, that, is that the that's the letterbox tagline for this film? Uh huh. That's not a Jarrett Duncan original. No. No. Can't. Someone already pointed out last week. <laughs> <laughs> that we're probably going to get added to the FBI watch list because of the fat girl episode. Wow. Well, and if that didn't because, do it, just because we talked about it. Well, your reading of this tag line, I think is equally problematic. So I, I, I certainly wouldn't harm the child. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I find nothing wrong with that title. Cause that's accurate to what the movie mill uh, movie is about. And I don't know any other, Way like to express innuendos that. Or, yeah, I don't know any other like subtext to that thing. So, yeah, sounds good. Dr. Genesir is riddled yeah. with guilt after an accident that he caused disfigures the face of his daughter, the once beautiful Christiane, who outsiders believe is dead. Dr. Genesir, along with accomplice and laboratory assistant Louise, kidnaps young women and brings them to the Genesier mansion. After mm-hmm. rendering his victims unconscious, Dr. Genesier removes their faces and attempts to graft them onto Christians. Like a John Woo movie? Like a John... I, I, I would say a John Travolta movie. What about John Woo? Oh, fuck him. He, oh. I mean, this is the, that was the John Travolta show. I mean, did you see that ham he brought? That Nick Cage ham? Oh, I know about Nick Cage. I just uh, thought you'd be more of a woo sympathist. Oh, but I guess not. No, man. No. That's okay. No, it's not. That movie's a, a good time. Stupid as hell. Could be so good, but... It's it's a remake of this, no? No, that would be uh, my boy, Jess Franco, who would make six iterations of Eyes Without a Face. Did you watch any this week? I know I've seen them. I've seen those, uh, so I did not. So you, uh, you can speak to them though. A little bit. I can talk a little bit. But anyway, yeah. Eyes Without a yeah. Face, RJ. Um, yeah. You you own this movie. You bet your sweet ass I do. I bought this movie over five years ago, mm-hmm. and uh, this week was the first time I ever watched it. Because oh. what had happened was I bought it like. Uh, when, before we started the podcast and you and me were like talking about criterion movies, I actually still bought physical media and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I got it on, that was when our dollar was par with the state. So it was actually economic, economical to buy stuff. Mm -hmm. And I bought it because, uh, it was in the horror category. And, Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I thought the, the cover looked cool. I was like, this is checking all my boxes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, uh, then we started the podcast and I was like, huh. I don't want to watch it anymore <laughs> until the eventual day that I uh-huh. have to. Yeah. Which uh, is, is ab- upon us now. Do you right. also own the Blu-ray? I do. Well, no, I own the DVD, which turned oh. out to be kind of a problem, I guess. Not really a problem. Really? How so? Well, I went to go watch the DVD and I was like, huh, this picture quality doesn't seem up to snuff. Not enough, not enough mm. Ks, not enough Ps. Where are the pixels What's at? A P? Pixels. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so I was like, you know what? I wonder. This is on the Criterion channel. I wonder if it'll is. look that much better. And you know what, RJ? It did look better off the channel because it's going nice. to be it's going to be using that Blu-ray, maybe at 720p only. 
but yeah. it, it looked a lot cleaner. And I did compare it because I was swapping between the inputs just to see if it made a difference. And I then also read that the Blu-ray actually at that point then was able to source from the original negative where I don't think they had had access to that back in like 2004 when they would have done their initial uh, digitization restoration. So yeah, there, 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 all these little subtle things. And I'm like, yeah, so I checked it out on the channel. I still got my yep. old, my old creaky DVD. Well, at least you have options. I got my screen grabs from the channel cause it's easier on my computer, but I did watch the Blu-ray and I thought that the uh, image quality was quite good. What do you call it? Supoib? Uh I wouldn't use that word. I would say pretty good show in sense of uh, how it looked. Pretty good look. Okay, good. So like, makes sense? what, what? What to you is the reputation of Eyes Without a Face going into this? Uh, so when I bought it, and uh, I'm using that as my experience because I bought it for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I to haven't, watch. To watch. Uh, I haven't <laughs> thought of it uh, since until this week. Uh, but when I when I originally got it, uh, it's like I said, I think there is like years ago, uh, Criterion had like the categories on their website where it's like horror watches or like dysfunctional families. And it was like all the Cassavetes films. Uh, and so I saw this on there and all I saw about it was influential French horror film about like, um, I can't remember how they described it. It wasn't like, uh, like mutilation, but it was like a word like that. And I was like, that sounds cool, I guess. And, uh, I liked the nice pink, uh, Blu-ray packaging i was like that's nice it really pops um and the mask that's all yeah. i i ever saw was the mask and i was like that looks cool i was like i'll give it a shot mm-hmm. and uh yeah so i bought it and uh and then i sat on it for <laughs> years and yep. years but that's all i knew about it going in so right. i didn't know much okay. else. i i now know that it was uh a frequently referenced and uh allegedly influential film to uh lots of people but uh i didn't know that before Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I think the when this came along, because I was uh, buying these Criterions, it was like, oh, Criterions putting out a horror movie. Because mm-hmm. up to the, up to this point, I mean, how many horror movies has Criterion done? Uh, well, I mean, so far for us, we've had Sisters, uh, Fiend Without a Face, Blob, uh, the Blob, um, Dead Ringers, Sixth Sense, and. What? Dead Ringers, I, I or not the six, <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, yeah. which are like, I, I mean, I mean, Silence of the Lambs is like thriller, horror Same. adjacent. And Sisters is thriller. Lambs. Dead Ringers is a drama. What's rec- what about Vid- Videodrome? I guess. Night and Fog. That's a horror film. That is the horror question mark genre. Yeah, horror question mark. Uh, what else we got? I'm looking at my list right now. Uh, what about Mabuse? Is nah, that a horror film? Nah. Yeah, I wouldn't call it that either. Uh, Onibaba? Yes. Yeah, so Onibaba fits in there. Oh, how we, how could we forget Quite On? Quite Long, did you say? Quite Quite An. <laughs> yeah, uh, Quite Quite On or whatever. That's that's in there allegedly. Um, what else do we got? What about the Honeymoon Killers? Is that thriller? Yeah, it's a crime movie. Crime movie. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think we've pretty much insomnia thriller as well. The thriller, yeah. So what, thriller. What, what? What? Based on that track record of having a walk, keeping talk, and that's also a, on the thriller. It's a side. slasher kind of, kind though. of proto slasher. Proto slasher. Kind of how I would. I I started thinking about Eyes Without a Face just like a few hours ago. You know, mm-hmm. getting ready for this episode, kind of thinking like this is kind of a proto artisanal horror. It is. Would you, it is actually, would you describe Diabolique as proto-artisanal horror? Yeah, man, people always talk about that, Diabolique. I know. We, well, we, wait, which we our... should be pointed out, uh, the screenwriters for Diabolique also wrote Eyes Without a Face. Did not know that, but nope. that's, but that is neat. What about Blood for Dracula and Flesh for Frankenstein? Are those, <sighs> those aren't really anything. <laughs> well, yeah, again, they're like, they're like a dipping in the toe into, right. uh, a consideration of literary types, but like they don't re- they don't really resemble the movies they're referencing. So, but I guess like thinking about Dracula right now. Um, mm-hmm. So I guess the you you would have had like Horror of Dracula, Curse of Frankenstein. 
uh-huh. in the in England that have come out, and apparently okay. they played well in France. Yeah, and so, but the thing is, though, France didn't really have a tradition of making horror movies at all. Okay, and so Diabolique would have been like kind of uh, an example of a French horror movie, and so Eyes Without a Face kind of emerges from this um, place of like, well. No one would sully themselves by making a horror movie. <laughs> mm. Like it, it was like viewed as like this. Like you'd be at to, you're making a joke movie if you're like going right. to do that. Like this is not going to be. You can't consider this seriously. And that was like the attitude uh, uh, Franju making this movie at the time, who had kind of uh, made a, a reputation for himself uh, making that documentary of his, Blood of the Beasts. You, did you uh, happen to check that out, RJ, on the Criterion disc? I read the description. No. And I went, no, thank you. Well, I mean, no, thank it, you. It, it, it depends on how you feel about the sound of like, like a, a, a carving. Animals dying? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, well, and like a cow skull being smashed open. Is it somewhat like the horse scene in Matrice? Um, yes, but like times 10. Yeah, I've I've been in a slaughterhouse before. It's not mm. an experience I'd like to relive. So, well, uh, yeah. Did you get something out of it? Yeah, I, I think I think it's like one of the one of the best documentaries ever made in some ways, because holy mm-hmm. fuck, it will it will open one's eyes uh, for one that does not to have the opportunity to stop by the abattoir to check to see how the sausage is made. Is it like that movie Abattoir? Um. Isn't there a movie know. like that's called Avatar? I remember you were trying to push something like that. Like, like, are, are you talking about the? James, or was it this movie? Is it like the James Cameron movie? No, wasn't there a <laughs> like an Avatar? Actually, you know what? Maybe it was this fucking movie. Like mm-hmm. I remember, like five years ago, before we started the podcast, yep. you made that that horror movie or horror yeah. movie list for me. Yeah. Was this the one in there? Probably. Okay, well, I passed on it then. I'm passing on it now. Yeah. But you you enjoy it because you're like I like being Gooled internally out. conflicted by what mm-hmm. happened, what the world is uh, doing. I, I want a little bit of that uh, cognitive dissonance uh, kind of brought nice. to the surface. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I, 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 I rewatched it this weekend. Man, that stuff is like it's raw. <laughs> like literally. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. I agree. Yeah, men smoking cigar or cigarettes. Um, just nothing raw about that. Jocelyn guts out of dead things. Uh, that's oh. kind of what we do here, though, no? That's right. Like this movie, Eyes Without a Face, which I guess we should start talking about. You don't have to. You can do whatever you feel like. It's your podcast. I guess. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, what what's there to be said about Eyes Without a Face? It is a genre don't movie, but it is told... <sighs> Like it's it's almost like a weird thing going back to a movie like this because I feel like horror movies like this are told all the time now, which is kind of my comment sure. about proto artisanal horror, where like you kind of uh, elevate the subject matter just by its pure presentation. As Eyes Without a Face, a perfect version of that. No, it's kind of a work in progress. Uh, yeah. The movie is encom- accompanied by a great deal of circus music. What do you call? Uh, you know how, what I thought of it like? Do you know what my go-to answer usually is when I hear funky music? Yes. Okay, it's a derivative of that. I actually thought the music was kind of like Curb Your Enthusiasm, like a uh, score. Is, yep. Or it's like, it's not like as... Nina Rota, as, kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not as funky as Seinfeld music, but it's like kind of in the same vein. But yeah, I was like, what is up with the circus music? That's the that's the thing that stands out the most to mm-hmm. me in this movie. Because like, where what is Because that is how the opening credits begin. Uh, oh. I kind of mentioned like third man esque. So I mean this yeah, is like, a little bit. This is kind the of the zigger? same. Yeah. But it's not like a zither either. Like that's a very specific sound. But it has the same kind of like this like kind of upbeat sound that is going to be in conflict in some ways to the images um which is it opens up with a car ride in fact the opening credits is kind of an extended scene of a car driving down the row like down like a wooded road um and then there's a woman driving she has 
something, someone in the back seat, and she's looking around, checking her rearview mirror. Is she being followed? And you're like, who is this? What What is her story? And then she kind of eventually pulls over, and then she proceeds to drag a woman's body out. Um, pro- probably the most weird little disturbing detail in this whole thing though is the way that the body's being dragged it's kind of like the feet are facing down and you just get like bare feet facing up mm. and you just yeah like, i know what you mean that's kind of like oh like, especially when so it's the bare feet being dragged and then there's that music in the background that's like bum, ba, dum, ba, dum, bum. and you're like this is a weird music to pair mm-hmm. with these feet yeah right Jared? that's right yeah yeah and it's a strange scene no, she gets, she gets dumped. This body gets dumped, and then we transition to the doctor, the good doctor, talking about heterografts. It's a heterograph, Jared. I don't know. I thought you were a scienceman, a brain scientist, not a whatever a heterograph scientist it's, is. It's kind of an overview. Of this this guy, he knows what he's talking about. He knows he knows those science terms, and he's <laughs> he, he's given a he's given talks to a room full of. Uh, French facial hair. I made. Oh, you know, I, I, I just see. noted because this guy's got some of that French facial hair going on. So do so some other people in here. Well, Jared, to go with French facial hair, heterographs are words that sound the same as other words, but they have different spellings and different meanings. Like fiendish facials? Potentially. For English language learners or for young students, these words can be very confusing. Like a fiendish mm. word you said. I feel like yeah, that wasn't... Yeah, but see, there's also a noun where it's a graft obtained from a member of one species and transplanted to a member of another species. Oh, a heterograph in the sense of like... Well, because hetero means different. Graft. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's some heterografting in here. Mm-hmm. Not the kind that I like. Yeah. Uh, like the experimental version of it, but uh, right. I would definitely like. I would graft something else on my on my body, mm-hmm. like, uh, like gills or something. Yeah, and so uh, doctor here, he winds mm-hmm. up getting a a tap from the the popo, saying that there's been a body of a young woman. It could be your daughter that's missing, right? The one with the weird face. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, her. that's her so, one character. Feature. So we uh, transition to a scene where the uh, the police are neg- are talking about the the yeah. state of the body, the forensics people, and there's like it's like pretty cold stuff talking about like her face was an open wound, and, yeah. and talking about the state of the body, saying don't forget the rats, as in the rats had been at it. Yeah, but I feel like I've said many times, rats get a bad rap. I mean, they, they got to eat too, dude. They, they do got to eat. So they'll, they'll eat whatever comes along, be it a you know, nice little ham sandwich or uh, you know, a, a carcass. Wouldn't it be better, though, in the spirit of that person that their, their, like, their essence is living on in another living creature? And then shit out. And then, and then well, the no, cycle but continues. It would get incorporated in, and like the like the nutrients would get pulled out and it would be in their in their bones. That's like when people are like, you know, if you die, a cat will eat you. And it's like, that sounds awesome. I'd live in my cat forever. Do you know what I mean, Jeff? Huh. Are we gonna get are Tell we me tell get... me you should uh you should you could save that for the newsletter. <laughs> the creeps newsletter? Uh, Is it what I think that's once a month? I, I think it's called Instagram. Yeah, and then just problematic things that were said yeah. over the last uh, four weeks. I want to see a face graft of RJ onto a cat. I would. Rob Eagle, make it happen. <laughs> I can expect uh, that coming. Uh, yeah. It'll be it'll be messaged to me at six a.m. tomorrow. So uh, I can't I can't wait. Outstanding. Yeah. Good. We can all look forward to that. So um, mm-hmm. we get we get sad dad. Sad dad shows up to identify the body. He looks at this open wound face and goes, that's her. Mm. And mm-hmm. uh, he's like, oh, yeah, well, the other father's here because he's also missing a daughter. But we'll send him home because you definitely know what you're talking about. And he's like, <laughs> we, because he's French. And so we. he heads out. He, he runs to this other dad. And he's like, oh, my God. And he's like, well, at least you have hope because your daughter hasn't been found yet, which is some real dark stuff when you start when do you know what this movie's about and where it's heading you're like 
Ah, what a what a piece. What is this movie about? It's about the love that a father has for his daughter, maybe, and about dogs and cages. Are there any metaphors in this movie? Mm, We don't talk about those things on this show. Right, right. I forgot. They're, They're verboten. So there's a there's a funeral, and. Some, it's it, there's an awkward air about it, and of course it's a little bit more awkward, and the audience starts going hmm when they're like, "Hey, isn't that the same woman at the funeral by the doctor's side that was dumping that body in the river? Did these did these two are they in cahoots? Did they did they kill? Did this man kill his own daughter and they're covering it up? Like what what's going <laughs> on here? Because but but then you're also wondering because you're like, wait, but then we saw that same woman. She was uh, out out in the streets, trawling the streets of Paris or something like that, looking for some young women. Apparently, again, you're like, "What's going on? What 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 mysteries lie in that chateau?" Wait a minute, that's the same lady I saw dumping bodies last week. That's exactly. She's dumping bodies two weeks in a row. Suspicious. Suspicious. So fake sad dad. Uh yeah, I mean, ha- have you ever? Tr- well, he's had still to sad. I mean, being he, sad. Well, I mean, he's he's still sad, but because he's not yeah. sad for the reasons that you would think that his daughter is in fact not dead, but horribly disfigured. Not dead, but horribly disfigured. Yeah. What else would he be? Being or sad. she be? I don't know. Well, there's I think there's like a range of things in between those two things, uh. and, and and even beyond those. One one of those things, um, yeah. So we get the scene where it's the long way home. They get back to the house. You get the the whole layout of the the mansion, and then they go and see the daughter who is face down in her bed. There's a whole lot of not showing her face, talking about her not wearing her mask, mm. and how she hates her mask, and because of Corona and how it didn't take exactly. Mm. What what a what a film for the times that we're in here in 2020. There's a, the one line that says you got to get into the habit of wearing it. it. Exactly. I know you don't like it, but you got to wear it. Mm-hmm. It's like it's the responsible thing to do. Exactly. Which is interesting. Um, so there's like you start you're, you're piecing it all together little mm-hmm. little by little. This talk of heterographs and facelifts and this doctor who's like so renowned and. Uh, then you have this talk of like the daughter's face being maimed and her talking about um, how there's reflections everywhere. Like you guys try to like cover up all the mirrors and stuff like that. But like, you know, spoons have reflections and she can see little bits and drabs. It's like really, it's, it's a nice little touch. It's not bad. No, no, it's not bad. And then, and I then, mean, then you get the mask what? on RJ, the, the, the cold flat, Lifeless mask with those eyes that are just so expressive, so lovely. There's eyes, but uh, is there potentially a face as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. yeah. So what's this whole movie about? Well, I don't know. Uh, doctor. Doctor's going to get his daughter a new face. Dr. Faustus? Yeah, Dr. Faustus in the American cut. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to get his daughter a new face. And yeah. he doesn't care who he has to maim along the way. That's just parenthood, dude. No. You'll do anything for your kids. Trust That's me. That's right. Get them to hockey practice on time. Yep. You got to wake up at 5 a.m. to get them to the rink. You're going to do it because uh, they're your kids. You love it's, them. It's game time. I'll, game I'll, time, baby. I'm going to beat up referees if I need to. I know a few people who've done that. <laughs> uh, <I'm... laughs> Not like, I mean, they're not like friends of mine. I just, like, people I know, it's like, oh, yeah, that dude beat up a ref once, and I go, whoa. <laughs> Weird. Uh, he lost his job, that guy. But, yeah, you know, that's going to happen. It's going to happen. Have you ever beat up a ref? Hmm. Not yet. All right. Well, maybe in your minifig league, maybe a ref will <laughs> uh, just kind of rub you the an wrong way, an and official? you'll storm out. No. Yeah. Beat him up. Ugh. No. What were you talking about? Um, eyes without a face. So we we oh, get, yeah. we, we, we get another setup. We get um 
the the you know this, the, the middle aged uh, doctor's assistant who goes into the town, gets another girl, says, "Oh, I've got tickets for the show. You should uh, we can sit mm-hmm. together." And then, oh, what's that? You're a student out here, wherever the hell it was, and you should come back out here. You, you could stay the night. It's an opportunity. The, the 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 train to Paris is just twenty minutes away. Come on out. Come on out. It's like this is this is a very bad idea. No one should do this. No one should. But I don't know. People do weird things. Yeah. Uh, soon enough, the chloroform comes out. <laughs> the old Duncan approach, eh? Mm-hmm. Um, but and so the other thing here, too, I, I guess I've mentioned is this. So the mansion uh-huh. has this permeating sound of dog barks. Uh, well, I mean... Everywhere I go sounds like animals to me, but I think that's for a different reason because I ha- it's in my head. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's in their head too, do, or do, do you think it's something else? Do the dogs talk to you, though? Sometimes. Okay. Does Sam yeah. speak to you? Well, sometimes they're telling me to do this or that, you know, and it's like mm-hmm. it's like I could do that if you want me to. It's okay. like, is that really what you want? That's fine. I mean, as long as Burn you're, it all as, down? As, as, long, okay. as long as you're managing it, it's all fine burn it all down and mm-hmm. you go okay sure um so the the, the, yeah. the next scene i guess here would be the the surgery uh what happens there well you get this like i don't know i think it's probably one of the more effective parts of the whole movie is just like where the doctor's drawing the outline of where he's going to make the incision on her face and you just kind of see the marker mm-hmm. on her skin where you see that just slight indentation of the marker as it kind of like trails in and you, the skin just kind of gives way and you're just like oh oh no and then you just like okay time to get the the scalpel out and then it just starts carving it obviously it's uh there's a little bit of a feed behind the the, the knife and then you squish it a little bit and then blood just starts coming out and make it look real good. And then mm-hmm. it transitions from there to where they have, uh, you know, obviously a not real face getting pulled off of the real face. But 1960 technology, holy shit. And then it goes just like that. Is it? Is that the exact sound that it makes? That, that's from the Dr. Faustus cut. Oh. Uh, so goes, you're talking about... Slurp of- like, uh, yeah fiend without a face you're talking about when they put like the uh when they actually like do the cl- like clamp it off with all the different like little clamps and then yeah yeah you know i did some stuff like that in my previous career it was not good mm-hmm. it's really scary it's not, it's not, not nice not good not nice not not nice yeah so what are you talking about well um and then yeah I, i've made a note here Raw dog in it. What were they doing, Jerry? Hmm. Um, and then we get talk about flesh rejection. <laughs> we 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 get the montage of like, cause so so daughter, she's got a she's got a new face. Uh, well, yeah, she has a new face, but what kind of face is it? It's someone else's. <laughs> that's ne- that's neither here nor there. And then, and then what happens? And then the other, the other girl, she wakes up without a face and she's all bandaged up, which again, is she cool with it? No, I don't know how that would feel. And then to wake up without a face. Yeah. It'd be really sore. Yeah. I imagine so. Like the drugs are going to start wearing off, but she's going to get got too. Hmm. No. Hmm. So. And then I, the movie kind of transitions to the perfunctory part of these stories where now it's like, so it turns out, you know, the daughter, she's uh she had a boyfriend. She had a fiance. There's always a fiance in these sort of uh, hammer tropings. And she's mm-hmm. like, I'm really sad about it. And one day he gets a phone call from her. And he's like, that was her voice. And that's like the little tip that there's, there's a little bit of hope and something's amiss and things aren't adding up because she's supposed to be dead. And so the police get involved. Uh, they're like, something's going on. There's people disappearing from the town. So we're, we're going to set up a, a young lady to be undercover. Undercover in what way? Um, like she's going to be the next victim. Oh, not like under the literal covers? No. Not like Don't locked be... down where it's like ladies are disappearing. Everyone stay in bed. Mm-hmm. It's not like that no. undercovers? No. 
singular well, cover. I'm glad I asked because okay. I was uh, confused. I was a little confused. I thought it was the other one. Okay. Not like well, Undercover Brother as well, RJ. That's a good show. Are you going to watch that this Christmas? I'm, it's not a Christmas film. But... I, am, I am not. I am not. Sure. Uh, yeah, and then so yeah, the movie just plays out with the rest of it where, you know, she gets set up to be brought into the house. She gets brought into the surgery at the doctor's place because he is still a legitimate doctor. But they're like, oh, she's got a nice face on her. This will be more than adequate. And it's like, we got to keep trying because my daughter's face just keeps rejecting these things. Um, we get a nice little montage of that talking about necrosis. Very tasty. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, in my dealings, I've done with uh, worked around some donor rejections in my day. Mm-hmm. It's not fun, man. Not fun. It's not fun. Well, that's like uh, the big thing with people. And um, when you get like organ transplants and even if you're like the same blood type and stuff like that, there's still like it, sometimes it doesn't take to because, you know, your body's immune system is like, that's not supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. It's just so doing like, its job. Just doing its job. And it, uh, so sometimes people with organs, they like one it. of the tricks it ha- they'll get an organ and it'll reject it and or, they'll get another one. Or you have, to, or you, yeah, you have to take pills like the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Just like immunosuppressants or something like that to like try to get your body not to kill you mm-hmm. and stuff. It's too it's bad. It's not like the comic books. <laughs> oh, where you could just put one guy's head on another guy's head, a body and he'd be no. like, Oh, there we go. <laughs> slap, slap this guy's face on like a John Woo movie, like a John Woo movie. Nice. The re- nice. You, know, you always got to talk about rejection. That's uh, that's one of the great things about face swapping. Well, what I think it's fitting because I think some of the most rejected movies in the Criterion Collection are the John Woo films that we enjoy, you They're know, awesome. Hard Boiled and The Killer. But everyone else, all these Criterion sims, reject them all the time because they're like, those aren't real Criterion films. Oh. And we're like, what is? What is, Fat Girl? <laughs> Not in my books. Um, so, uh, my, my final note about this movie here is mentioning, uh-huh. uh, the baby face turn okay, because face, you know, baby face from wrestling when, when bad people do a good thing, do we, it's like a baby face turn rather than a heel turn when someone goes bad oh, I see. baby face turn. Um, you, you know, you know, I'm familiar with that. Yeah, it's, it's great. So, uh, cause daughter's like, I feel real bad about all this. Because because the, the, the whole in, the the new surgery gets interrupted and she's like, oh man, this girl's face is going to get ripped off too. That shouldn't happen. She has sort of like she has a zone out and a, a contemplative moment. And goes, yeah, I'm just going to let her go. And then uh, and then RJ, mm-hmm. the question is asked, who let the dogs out? Uh, where did you find such a? a formidable question something that i i feel like is possibly the perfect representation for this movie like where did you where did you even come up with such an idea Hmm. i mean i watched the movie oh okay yeah okay you didn't read like a real like a hit uh, letterboxd reviewer their review up to two likes already two whole likes jared two yeah uh, two whole likes you I wouldn't, didn't see I, I wouldn't that. know I wouldn't know anything about that okay so yeah, yeah. and then the movie ends on this so like what? it's like it's like a Jean Cocteau movie where um, uh, kind Chris, of. Christiane just like walks off into the woods and there's like birds all around her and it's the Disney ending she's a Disney princess I, but it's but is it, as as the the critics like to say is it lyrical I don't even know what that means exactly what do they mean exactly Lyrical in the lyrical sense or lyrical in the non-lyrical sense? These are the big questions. With eyes wide open. The Stanley Kubrick film? No. That would be eyes wide shut. The Bill Kubrick film? Bill Kubrick himself. He's kind of like Paul Cassavetes. Do you remember him? (laughs) He's a good dude. Anyways, what were you you talking about? Um, Cinema. Oh, yeah. Cool. The state of cinema. So anyway, yeah, I mean, so I I'd, I'd seen this movie, you know, yonks years ago. ago, fifteen years ago now. Sure. And uh, I mean, it never like it didn't blow me away at the time. I love the idea of it. I think it's cool. Uh, I I always want more horror in my Criterion. Sure. Um, but uh, I mean, upon watching this again too, it's kind of like this is okay. 
Mm-hmm. There's like it's like very well shot. Um, mm-hmm. it, I'd say it's a bit slow. Sure, you know? it's 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 fair. It's a little. Uh, I mean, it's only like ninety minutes, ninety five minutes long. Mm-hmm. I think, and uh, but I had, some of the visuals are fantastic. The mask. It's all about that mask. Yes, but no, 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 no one talks about the uh, the actresses. What looks very much like a wig to me. She's got what do they call that in the in the professionals? Uh, remember when he was talking about an actress who's wearing a wig? You you used the term once. You're like they call that a uh, something. <laughs> okay. I can't remember what the fuck was that from. I think it was from like uh, oh my god, <laughs> where like actresses wear wigs that aren't clearly aren't their hair. And they call it something. Okay. You told me this one time, and I thought it was funny, <laughs> but now I can't remember what it is. I can't remember. Yep. Her, I, her hair is, you know, whatever. But the big thing about the mask, I think, is is that it, it fits so well. Mm-hmm. It almost looks like there isn't a mask on her face, and they drew the line on, and she's just, like, amazingly still and has perfect skin. Is how I was looking. Oh at the yeah. Mask. Well, there's different because there's definitely times from like so from, well from from afar. It's like you can't yeah. really you don't quite tell that this person has nothing there. Yeah. It's just a blank. Mm-hmm. It's it's incredibly fitting. Incredibly fitting. Sure. Mm-hmm. What else were you talking about? You think so, the show's uh, okay? Yeah. I mean, so I mean, so my, my 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 guy J- Jess Franco, he makes the yeah. awful Doctor Orloff. Two, sure. two years later. Um, and then he he winds up making another version of it that's, like, way more sleazy called Faceless in the 80s. And, mm-hmm. I mean, Awful Dr. Orloff almost feels like a real movie. <laughs> like, it's, mm-hmm. it's it's before Franco just starts doing his uh, movies with pubes. and the, Which films? <laughs> Sorry? Labias. Is that artisanal or? Yes, very artisanal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of that yeah. going on, but awful Doctor. Mor- yeah, awful Doctor Orloff was. It's, it's like a B movie. Um, gotcha. But there's a. It's it's it, obviously those images from Eyes Without a Face stuck with him because he winds up doing like iterations of these mad scientists doing mm. all sorts of crazy things. All, all sorts of crazy ideas yeah. about loving each other. His name's <laughs> Jeff. He's dating my mom. Yeah. That kind of thing. Hmm. Gotcha. Well, hell, there was even a movie that following year called Adam Age Vampire. It sounds cool. Uh, about a doctor attempting to take the faces of other women to repair his daughter's face. Huh. How, like how, Adam, how, the name Adam, or Atom? At, like at, Atom. 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 That's cool. Up and at them. <laughs> Up and at them. Um, there is the British film Corruption starring Peter Cushing which has uh, a surgeon tries to restore his fiance's beauty by repeatedly treating her with fluids extracted from the pituitary glands of murdered female victims. Classic seventies films, the pituitary gland. It's got all the answers. It's like, it's like spinal juice. It's a rebral spinal fluid. Um, And then of Uh, course, uh, I guess like the the pinnacle though of this genre would be the uh, Pedro Almodovar film, the skin I live in. Uh, yes, that's also fitting, but I think the pinnacle, which you kind of have been downplaying. Oh, I'm all, sorry. All episode what? for reasons unknown. Uh, mm-hmm. what about the John Woo masterpiece face off? I feel like that is perhaps one of the most original movies and has nothing to link it other than superficial elements, which Correct. of course only you would pick up on. Not the deeper meanings of face off. <laughs> Face, well, face forward slash off. Well, when we get to spine, uh, was it 2000 face off is going to be, I think. Yeah. We got the inside on the criterion track. People don't know that, but we, uh, we actually have partnered up with them for sure. Okay. Uh, make sure you let them know that. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a, uh, there's some good ones. I, I didn't realize the El Moldavar connection there, but, uh, I mean, that's fitting. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's, it's not quite the same thing, but, right. uh, it definitely has surgery and daughters involved. Mm. Right? Well. Those are, those are constants. Have you, You've seen it, right? Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, what happens in the skin I live in and what happens in an eyes without a face are not the same. They're not. 
but yeah. it's like, but what? I mean, what, what, there's one... cosmetic surgery, and then there's daughters, and, and, and then, it's... and but then there's like also like a space, but there's like far more like. I mean, I think this is a better movie. Like, is what I'm saying. As Skin far as like, it? yeah, yeah, that that movie's fucking horrifying. Yeah, that movie is like, yeah, but it's like in a, a good way. But it's like the mad scientist, uh, yeah. bandaged faces, and like people kind of being kept inside of rooms, and like the. But again, it, it can't. You, that's a movie you have to watch and experience. You don't want to know yeah, too much we, about we, it. Yeah, there's a da- there's daughters in it, RJ. There's daughters. There's daughters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like the John Mayer song. Yeah. So, so RJ, uh, <laughs> I've been talking for a while. What did you, you think of Eyes Without a Face? Well, I think there's a lot of build up to this thing now because I mentioned I was like I've owned it for a long time. I've just never watched the fucking thing. Uh, so I threw it on, and I was watching it, and. Uh, immediately it's like i said i was kind of thrown off by the music first and foremost i was just like what's up with this music surely you must like, be getting used to it though now i mean this is the criterion collection In- inappropriate where, audio cues and unusual musical selections i mean abound yeah we have strange music drops and we have frank depictions of italian men uh that is the criterion collection in a nutshell apparently uh so i was thrown off by the music a little bit and then there's a few things in this movie that i think uh like astute listeners would probably pick up on as rj no-nos uh like the the animal dog lab being run there but Mm -hmm. there are a few things else in its favor so uh i'll tell you right now i think this is a pretty good show Mm mm-hmm and I will label it as such now that we've talked about it. Uh, I um, So when I was watching it, I kind of had some like some peaks and some valleys where I was like, I was like, I'm liking what they're doing right now. And then uh, other parts I was like, eh, whatever. So it kind of it comes and goes. Mm-hmm. But I think as a whole, by the time I got near the ending and we had the liberation of the dogs and the Disney princess ending, I was kind of like, you know what? I'm on board with this. I was like, I kind of like the way that this, where this kind of went, uh, because I, I too, uh, like the mad scientist route. And I think it is, I do like the approach here where it's, uh, the father and daughter and he says he's doing it for her, but it's like, actually all he's doing is kind of appealing to his own vanity where he's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make you better. (laughs) And she's just like, she just doesn't want to be alive at all. (laughs) So she doesn't really even care Mm -hmm. about like how she looks. She's like, I'm just, I don't want this. Uh, So I kind of get that because I feel like that's a, a very common um, Gen Z uh, mentality now where it's like, I never even wanted to be alive, Uh, which is what I I read on the internet. Um, But I I like the kind of build up between them two. And uh, I do, I think like, in uh like through all of it it is like a pretty grim movie where it's just like some dude kidnapping ladies and like cutting their faces wow. off yeah his, like, his, like that's hench, his henchwoman thing. yeah his henchwoman and then you're just like fuck that's pretty like gruesome but i think this is a proto french extremism jared and i know last week we had erotic french extremism uh <laughs> so i just erotic. Uh, well, in a, in a sense, right? Yeah. Um, but I actually, one thing that like really struck me in this was the, the length of the surgery scenes. Oh, yeah. Cause it's like 10 minutes long. And I was just like, holy fuck. I was like, they're really letting this breathe where they're like, we're going to show you a face being removed. And you're like, okay. But like, I, I like how it's shown with like all of the forceps, like, uh, pinching and then just like it, like the method he's like, all right pick it up real slow. <laughs> okay. We're going to go drop it on her face. So I like the buildup of it there. Uh, but yeah, the, um, the, the length of the surgery scenes, I was like, fuck, I was like, I wasn't expecting this in this movie. Mm-hmm. The last, uh, yeah. apparently which, RJ. Yeah. When yeah. it was screened at the Edinburgh film festival, oh. people fainted, yeah. which prompted George Franju to say something along the lines of, uh, that uh, ah, no wonder the men wear kilts because they're uh, ladies. I... They're not real men. <laughs> That's like uh, when Arnold Schwarzenegger said, uh, "I call you girly men." You remember that mm-hmm. that famous broadcast when he was governor? Still. That... Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, what movie hasn't been? What horror film hasn't been described as people fainting or people were vomiting in the theaters? And it's like. <laughs> 
Like didn't like we've talked about it before, but didn't people say that about the original Dracula? Like the Bay of Lugosi one? They're like, people fainted. That's how scary it was in nineteen like thirty. Mm-hmm. And you're like, All right. Oh. Cool. Uh anyways. Um yeah, I like I like the build up there. I'm not I'm not too keen on the uh, the dog testing stuff, but I did like the payoff to it in two ways where where the girl like she just wants to die. <laughs> and she's like, you know when you know when dad injects the dogs mm-hmm. when the surgeries don't work? It's like, can you give me some of that? Because like I just don't want to be here. Uh but I do like I do think there's a natu- there's like a retribution of them and like an actual like they they get like they they're freed and then like they have the revenge which is fine i don't care much for that but i'm glad that they just get freed and then i do think that it's like a a disney princess ending she's walking with the with like the doves and the animals and she's just off on her own and she can be whatever she wants to be now is she delusional i don't know possibly but uh she's her own person and i think that's what matters so um i i'm with you i don't think it's like there's no like high like marks on it where it's just like, this is like some of the best shit. But, uh, watching, I was like this, I was like, I think this is pretty good actually. So, uh, I'm glad that I own this film because it's like, I'm not going to watch it again, but I was like, it's kind of, <laughs> because I, 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 I can't watch rewatch criterion films as you know. Um, but I, I, uh, I dug what they were doing here. So I was surprised by myself. I was like, I think this is pretty good. I was like, I like this good stuff. Good stuff. So not the best, but uh, I think better than a lot of the other stuff we watch. So not too bad. I think it's I think it was a cool 60s horror film. Right. But in French, I won't hold against it. Yeah. Well, I mean, because there's also like in like the the making of it does not feel like it has the trappings of a 1950s, 60s science fiction horror movie. So when this movie got released in America, America. it, it, it was a double bill, RJ. And uh, it was du- it was double billed up with a movie called The Manster. You know about you know about The Manster. It sounds cool. Tell me it's good. Yeah, well, it's on YouTube. Anyone okay. could anyone could check it out right now. It's all of seventy two minutes long. Okay. And it's everything you could expect. It's uh, it's set in Japan. Uh, sure. Oh. And there's a mad Japanese scientist who is, is going around injecting people for the sake of science. Sure. He's got a lady monster he keeps in a cage. Okay. He has a... Uh, there is a woman who... I think she is... God, I, it's hard to tell what they're going for. I think she's like a Caucasian woman, but she's playing a Japanese woman or something. It's like... Is that what this is? She has kind of a little bit of that weird accent that white people do when they want to say that that they're Asian. Yeah, maybe. That they're Japanese. And you go, huh, 1959. Not that long ago. So uh, the costume is like a gorilla suit or a two-headed gorilla suit. You can look. Mm -hmm. You you can Google search it. And once you've seen The Manster, you've probably seen this movie a thousand times in your dreams. Mm Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's like a Corman movie, and maybe I like the sounds of this monster though. I just think that's a cool title. I mean, the the two headed monster. Like, check it out. I think it would be cool if it was like a a guy like the monster was more about a guy who's just like the epitome of man, like American man. Like he just drank a lot of Bud Light. Maybe he wore overalls on the weekends when he was hanging out with the boys. Right. Things like that, you know. Kind of like that. Yeah. So you're telling so. it exists. It's so, but, but it becomes really clear the difference between Eyes Without a Face and The Master. Like why it's like okay, this is like a really well made movie, and is like, ser- like this is like made by a serious director mm-hmm. who the is like he was like this this like there's like whatever you want to call it, like laughably like the French sensibility, which it doesn't because mm-hmm. it's like in France it was like it would be like upturned noses at the time toward this kind of like why 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 is this coming out of the french cinema poo poo on this poo poo excuse me i know pretty harsh words all i know is that jared duncan just said the manster is the best criterion film you've watched so Mm -hmm. far is that top in your ranked list 
Uh, is it? I don't know. I don't know. Would you put the Manster at the top? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, from the from the essay that accompanies this um, by David Callet, he mentions here that uh, writing for the Cahier du Cinema, my favorite words, Michel de la Haye argued that Eyes Without a Face must actually be a film noir masquerading as horror, since it was beyond question that no serious artist would debase himself by making a horror picture. Why, what do people, why are people such, like, dinks about horror movies? Like, who cares? It was a different time. What about elevated horror? Wow. I mean, that this this again, this is a, a prime example of what was coming. Proto-elevated? Mm-hmm. Is this, like, mid-elevation studios? It's, like, before people knew that they were, like, they didn't even know they were being elevated yet. Ah. Do you think that um, if this movie were to be made today, do you think Blumhouse would do it, or? Oh, yeah. Who do you think would direct it? Would it be the uh, the dude who made um, Upgrade, or would it be Jordan Peele? Because those are the only two Blumhouse directors. Oh, no, that's not true. Those are the only two big Blumhouse oh, directors. Yeah. I I, no, they'd get someone else to do it. Not James Wan? Someone else? Well, James Wan's not even in their wheelhouse, is he? he he's producing lots of shit now, but a lot of it's from Warner Brothers. Well, yeah, because he's, he's the conjuring Maestro. Yeah. yeah, so now all he's doing is producing stuff. Yeah. That's right. But he... <sighs> okay, you want to hear from yeah. some people who hate Eyes Without a Face? I mean, who could even hate this? Like, Do you know what I mean? Like, why? <sighs> wow. But yeah, let's hit it. People always have to have something to say, don't they? Yeah. Um, first up, Fatima. Fatima. Half a star. Maybe I'm just dumb, but I genuinely was bored to death watching this film. I didn't understand the message very well, and it was just boring. Too quiet for my liking and too calm. Not even sure how to explain my dislikes about it. I mean, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I've been confused before. Uh, I think this is a new account that they just started a couple months ago because they don't have a lot of films logged. But the only five-star films include uh, Goodnight Mommy, uh oh. and the invitation okay that's it huh this is the only two five star films so i think it's a new account okay but that's and, fine and is this the only half star it is it is wow yeah they only have <laughs> um 17 films logged okay so. uh next up josh okay. half a star boring i was bored i feel like All such right. a plebe writing this a I, pleb well, they wrote plebe. Oh, God. Yeah. I shouldn't have written anything. I feel guilty for having been bored. I enjoyed listening to Sardonicast discuss it, but I, was entertain I wasn't entertained at all. All you movie buffs who are better than me, I'm sure you got it or will get it if you haven't watched it yet and enjoy immensely and pick up on why this was so ahead of its time and timeless. Uh... I feel like this person's not quite sure of what they're about. So half star films include Eyes Without a Face, Jack, one of my favorite movies, uh, Episode Three, Revenge of the Sith, uh, Home Alone is a half star apparently. Both versions of Funny Games is a half star, which I I I can get behind. That's fine. Um, there was something weird in here, though. So, like, okay, yeah, they said that they were really bored by this, but their favorite movies are Seven Samurai, 400 Blows, and Paths of Glory, Straight Time. It's like, I like all, like, well, I like most of those movies, but those are, those are arguably boring movies as well, right? <laughs> like, Seven Samurai, like, you don't even like that much. Like, would you say Seven Samurai is boring? I mean... A little bit? I think it's, I mean... I think it's overrated. Okay, and that's I don't think I, I don't think that's a bold claim because people really do rate that as the greatest achievement the greatest. in yeah. movie history, and I'm like, no, nah, not for me. What about Fight Club? No, five stars. Josh gave it five stars. He also gave Ichi the Killer five stars, which I find extremely problematic, but that's just me. Okay, uh, one more, John yeah. Johnny Five. 
One okay. star. I swear to the almighty creator, if Letterbox says four-ish plus stars, I hate it. Oh, this guy sucks. <laughs> he gave that feels good man a half a star. <sighs> wow, well, okay. Which like, I feel he, like I feel like I didn't know where this is going. Uh not a ton of half star films. Other one star films include Get Out, uh One uh-huh. Cut of the Dead. Okay. Uh Evil Tunes, apparently. The Descent Prom Night, uh, Hereditary. So that's all right. These are this person's favorite films, Jared. Okay. Found from 2012. It's like a guy, shirtless guy wearing a uh-huh. gas mask. Yeah, I've seen that movie. Uh, the Greasy Strangler. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cat Sick Blues from 2016. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. I know and then are. the other favorite film is Who's Watching Oliver from 2018. Yeah. You know these films? I do. Here? I've seen every single one of those except for that last one. Yeah. Uh, other five-star films include Cannibal Holocaust, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre V, the Russian film, which we both like, Martin, uh, Flight of the Navigator. Oh, yeah. Which is strange. Eating Raul, yep. uh, Belial's Dream, which I guess is some kind of basket case uh, sh- thing. Uh, Monkey Bone, starring Brendan Fraser. Oh. Uh, what else we got here? Holidays. Ugh. Oh. Uh, we need to talk about Kevin. What? What is this shit? I, it's Westworld. Just, I find it fascinating that this person dislikes this movie so strongly. Yeah. I guess ultimately it's like, yeah. really? Why don't you like this movie? Because I mean, but I I get their aesthetics here. I, I get it. Yeah, you're you're picking up what I'm laying down. Like yeah. this person's not. These five star movies are sometimes just four star movies for me. Yeah. yeah. They did give Freddy's Dead: The Final Nightmare five stars as well, though. Oh dear. And Motel Hell five stars. Oh dear. <laughs> Uh, there's, there's some other, uh, there's some other problematic things in here as well. So, uh, I don't know. Some good ratings, some like, okay. okay. Oh. Yeah. Well, any final words here for eyes without a face, a movie that you think is a pretty good show that you'll never watch again. And you're glad pretty you own sh- it. Pretty good show. I'm glad I own, I own it, but, uh, I'm never going to watch it again. Couldn't have said it better yourself, hey? Excellent. Excellent. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would tell people, check this out, I guess. Um, sure. I mean, if you want for, to. If you want to check out early French horror movies. Mm-hmm. And, uh, hey, maybe check out some of that Jess Franco. Awful Dr. Orloff. Would you watch that over uh, over this? Well, I mean, I've, I've just seen this now again. I'm, I'm not due for another 15 years. But you're a big Dr. Orloff guy? I mean, I would watch it again. I've only seen it once. Oh, I gotcha. And I like that Franco. Which one, James or Dave? <laughs> uh, Jesus. Jesus Franco. Jesus Franco? That's right. Jesus Franco. That's right. After the like break. That. After the break. Yeah. Let's let those dogs out, RJ. Which ones? Have have them at them. What? I don't know. I, was, I mean... <laughs> what are you talking uh, about? Remember, remember when that guy was wearing the, the padded suit so the dogs would chew at him as they devoured him and maybe even ate his face off? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Was pretty I cool. like seeing dogs get retribution. Don't we all? Except in Wes uh, Craven films. Mm-hmm. 